Hello everyone and welcome to our virtual assembly. I hope you've had another great week of learning at home. There's been some amazing work produced across the primary school from teleportation videos to scavenger hunts, cooking projects to science experiments. Your teachers have been really impressed with your level of creativity this week and we're going to take a look at some of those projects later on. But before we do that, do you remember last week we were talking about the six R's. The six R's are six ways which help you become really successful learners and build your learning power. Last week we talked about resilience and before I tell you the word for this week I'm going to give you two clues to see if you can work out which one it is. So here we go. Clue number one. Teachers have had to think of different ways of teaching you now that the school is closed and online. Clue two, you're stranded in a forest and you're able to find a way to get a fire going and cook yourself some food. Did you work out which of the six R's it is? It was resourceful. Being resourceful is being able to question, imagine, investigate and make links and connections and find solutions to problems, especially in difficult situations. I wanted to share with you this famous Aesop fable called A Crow and a Pitcher. A pitcher is a jug and in this story the crow has to be very resourceful to find a solution to a problem in a difficult situation. The Crow and the Pitcher it had been a long, hot summer, and the sun had scorched the earth so that the rivers and streams had run dry. The animals were desperately parched and longed for the rain to fall so that they could have something to drink. A thirsty crow was circling the sky, looking for a puddle or a bird bath to sip from, when it spotted a small table with a glass pitcher on it, hidden in the shady corner of a cottage garden. It flew down and landed on the table. When it peered down the long neck of the pitcher, the crow's beady eye saw that there was still some water at the bottom, enough to provide a thirst-quenching drink. At last, thought the crow, its mouth so dry it struggled to even squawk with excitement. Standing on the tips of its claws, the crow stuck its long beak down the neck of the pitcher and tried to reach the water. But it was no good. The water was too low down. It tiptoed even higher and craned its neck as much as it could, but it still didn't work. The neck of the pitcher was far too narrow for the crow to take a sip. The, pro the poor crow despaired. I'll surely die of thirst if I don't drink this water, it thought. But if I knock the pitcher over, it will all pour away. The crow hopped around the table and flapped around the garden looking for something that might help. Then it spotted a pebbly path and had a clever idea. It picked up some pebbles in its beak then flew back to the table and dropped them into the pitcher one by one. With each pebble the crow dropped into the pitcher the water level rose a tiny bit. The crow flew around the garden grabbing more and more pebbles and dropped them in so that the water level rose higher and higher until, at last, it was high enough for the crow to have a long, refreshing drink. A problem's not a problem if you take time to think, said Mr. Crow. Thanks to its clever thinking and determination, the crow was able to survive the harsh drought that summer, and he visited the garden every day. Oh, hello. I'm sorry. I was feeling a little bit hungry, so I thought I'd be resourceful and whilst you were watching the story, have a sneaky snack of crisps. Do you think that's a good example of being resourceful? Probably not. Plus, it's not very healthy. Now, scientists have set lots of tests for crows and found that crows really are as smart as the one in the crow and the picture story. Here are some amazing things that crows can do. Some crows in Japan 
have found that if they drop walnuts on the road, cars drive over them and crack the hard shells. The same crows then stood at the traffic lights, waited for them to turn red, then hopped onto the crossing to get a nut feast. Crows can also bend wires to make hooks, and then they use them as tools to get at food they can't reach with their beaks. Well, this Pringle box has given me an idea for another weekend challenge which is going to develop your resourcefulness. So my challenge this week is for you to upscale a Pringles pot into something more interesting. Of course it doesn't have to be Pringles as you can get other containers very similar to this. Now Tony Robbins, who is a famous author and motivational speaker said, success is not about your resources, it's about how resourceful you are with what you have. So please don't go out and buy lots of things to help you with this project. The pot should be the main part of the item that you make if you decide to accept the challenge. Here are some ideas to get you going. So, if you do decide to accept this challenge, please make a short video or take a picture of your upscale Pringles pot and send it to me by next Wednesday so we can share your ideas in the assembly. Good luck and be resourceful. Now, last week we had the TT rock stars and here's Mr. Wolverson to tell you all about how we got on. Mr. Wolverson. Thank you to everyone at BBIS for participating in the TT Rockstars competition. I could see from the scores across the school that everyone was enjoying it and really getting involved in the competition. So thank you so much. So let's have a look at the top three students for the week. In third place from 5AW with 9,232 points was Ethan. In second place from 6HJ with 13,095 points was Yo-Yo and the winner from 6OM with exactly 20,000 points was David Kovach. Well done to David, I could see that you put a lot of effort into that. The winning class for the week with an average student score of 1,935 points was 6OM. Well done to 6OM, thank you very much. So, as we all enjoyed it so much, I'll be keeping my eye out for the next maths competition that we can enter, so stay tuned. Now it's time for our online stars of the week, and starting in reception year one, we have Kolosh, 
for going above and beyond in every activity. Kolosh completed an amazing pirate small world and is interacting in all classes. Let's have a look at his video now. The pirates were, were looking for the, the treasure and, and go and go, but he jumped in the water and, and, and find treasure. Kolosh, that was absolutely amazing. Well done. Now in year one, Bolaj has been an expert explorer this week during outdoor learning and has captured some fantastic nature photos. Moving into year two, we have Slatter for being a reflective learner and planning an amazing story still short film, including different characters, narration and a full story arc. Also in year two, Eric, for always being ready to learn and showing resourcefulness in the different ideas he makes come to life. In learning about using camera, tri camera trickery to teleport, Eric demonstrated a clear understanding of the different elements that make up his finished project. Let's take a look at the year two videos. Once upon a time, there was a big fair, there was a big earth with lots of life and animals. There were fairies and humans and animals and they were living in a big family of love. One day a uh, alien came to the earth and wanted to put the earth in jail. So the girls decided to protect it. In year three, we have Yakov for showing a mature attitude towards his learning and being on top of his assignments in an organized and punctual manner. And Julia for having the confidence to try new things and use her creativity to submit ent entertaining videos of her seesaw projects. And we're gonna take a look at one of her videos now. Hey guys, so let's make this bread. Um, I got some ingredients here. But unfortunately, I'm not on a computer. So I can't like fold it off and then show everything. I'm on an uh, iPad and every bowl is pretty full. So I got some flour, I think that's salt, sugar, just like a little. Berries, blueberries, and raspberries, I think that's that. It's kind of mushed up. Then we have butter, baking soda and milk so well i don't know if you need that's why we brought the water too so first of all i got my bowl here it's pretty clean and wet so first of all i'm gonna start with the flour i mean that's the most like one that you need moving into year four we have alex for being a risk taker in mathematics and working towards his targets we also have Alexandra for showing initiative and being resourceful in her projects and for challenging herself to teach someone something she has mastered. Let's have a look at Alexandra's video. Hi guys. Today I will be teaching you how to multiply four digit numbers by one digit numbers. For example, we have 9,875 multiplied by 3. The first thing we do is multiply this by this, which equals 15. Well done, Alexandra. I think you can definitely take on some maths lessons when we get back to school. In year 5, we have Eleanor for coming to every lesson ready to learn and showing enthusiasm and confidence when presenting to the class. And we also have Oliver for being punctual, again being ready to learn at every lesson, and for engaging himself by creating entertaining videos of his learning. 
Let's take a look at one of his science experiments now. So hey guys, today I will be showing you how to make more clear water from this. We will need to put the water in. Like that. We need to um, put it in. Oh, it's really hard. Like that. And don't make a mess of it. You can see how we made the water a bit more clear. We couldn't do drinking water because since we added dirt, it is very hard to get the dirt out because it has very small particles. There is a little dirt under it, but you could see how much clearer it got. In year six, we have Tommy for being a risk taker by diving into online learning with enthusiasm. And Yo-Yo? for being on time, being ready to learn every lesson and showing resilience in the face of academic challenges. Congratulations to all of our online learner stars. Now let's see all those dojo points you've been collecting and who is the winner of House Points this week. In fourth place, we have Team Amber with 110 points. In third place, Team Sapphire with 117 points. In second place, Team Ruby with 123 points. And the winners this week are Team Emerald with 130 points. So let's have a look at how that's affected the competition for the whole term. Here was the chart from last week. And as you can see, if we look at this week's, Team Emerald have now extended their lead a little bit, three points ahead of Team Ruby, but there's still a chance for Team Ruby to win the competition. Now, I was talking with the school council this morning and David mentioned that on Sunday, it's the International Day of Forests, which is a special day to celebrate and raise awareness of the importance of all types of forests. There are lots of beautiful forests around Budapest, so why not go out for a walk in one of them on Sunday? Or perhaps you can even do a forest cleanup as part of your walk. Again, please share any photos or videos with me or your teachers. I wish everyone a great weekend. And don't forget about your Pringle Tub Resourcefulness Challenge. See you all next week.